I'm Alexandra Daisy Ginsberg and I'm a designer and I research emerging technologies like synthetic biology and I'm experimenting with new ways that we can think about design. A project that I worked on five years ago is called Echromite and it was working with students who were designing real bacteria for a competition and we worked with them to imagine the implications and one idea was a yoghurt that would contain these engineered bacteria, we call it Echromite, you'd drink it, it's a bit, a bit like a Yakult and it would detect diseases in your gut and if you had a particular disease you'd start pooing the corresponding colour. And recently, in the last few months, that technology has got closer to reality. The scientists in America are actually making programmable gut bacteria that can detect and record diseases. And for me, it it's opens up a lot of questions about whether our fiction actually influenced the science. And if that is the case, what kinds of fictions should we be designing? Can we actually challenge the things that science makes or help innovate in a different way? In designing for the sixth extinction, I imagined synthetic biological organisms that might be designed to save nature. So this idea that maybe we'd actually release things into the wild to help save or act as companion species for things that are suffering. So there's a kind of bioremediation unit that makes the soil less acid you know, after acid rain. There's a kind of mushroom that stops sudden oak death or helps cure trees of that and sort of pump serum into the tree or a seed disperser that actually takes the place of extinct mammals. So each of these is a kind of biological roving machine or unit that would pop up and help preserve nature, but they would operate slightly separately. They'd be made out of synthetic proteins, they're almost like synthetic plastics, and they'd eat each other in closed technological ecosystems. For Dazeen and Mini Frontiers, I'm working with synthetic biologists at Imperial College London, thinking about a synthetic biological car. But the exciting part for me is thinking about how the material of the Mini might change in a synthetic biological future, but how that might actually change the way we interact and own a car. Does it start to take on design principles that are more like biology, like more like evolution and diversity and mutation, but through the way that people interact with the objects? So the concept is around repair ecologies. Would cars that are repaired in a hot place be different to cars repaired in a city full of pollution, for example, or cars repaired somewhere humid? At the moment there's a lot of research that is happening around biological plastics like chitin, which is like what's in crab shells, or designers working with bacterial cellulose, using kombucha tea to make a kind of plastic that biodegrades very fast. So I'm interested, can we find new materials in this process? Can we imagine what they look like when they're scaled up to a car and how would that change how a car is a, an object that we normally leave outside? and are happy to drive around and would it become more precious or valuable or would it fall apart differently? So how do we design that process of interaction with the object in itself? Mm -hmm.